I'm Alex Baldwin, and I want to know how hard it is to follow your dreams. Since I was young, motorsport has been a huge part of my life. I have immersed myself within the sport, but I've never had the opportunity to race competitively. In three months' time, I'm hoping to race in an endurance club event in a BMW 3 Series. But before I race, there are many things I need to overcome. These challenges will test me to my limit and question whether the effort will be worth achieving a life's ambition. I remember back in primary school, my dad got me into motorsport by showing me stuff like Formula One on TV. That sort of spiralled and I started watching other forms of motorsport on there as well, which you know, led this passion to just keep growing. We then started going to real life motor races, places like Brands Hatch, Lydon Hill, quite local to us. You know, I've gone now all around the world to follow this passion, follow this love for motorsport. But there's still that one thing that sort of burns deep inside me, and that's to take part in a motor race myself. That's never really left me. I wanted to ask myself this question because so many of us have dreams and aspirations but are never able to fulfill them. I wanted to know if you dedicate yourself to your dream, how hard is it to achieve it? So I figured out what I need to do on this journey now. Firstly, I've already filled out my license application form for my motorsport license. So I'm all ready for that in a few weeks time now. Then I'll need to work on the budget, understand how much money we're gonna need for this whole thing and hopefully maybe put together a bit of a, a fundraiser to, to sort that all out. Then I need to go ahead and buy all of the safety equipment and there's lots of that for motorsport so that's gonna be another expensive task. Then I'll need to get to work learning the simulator, uh, give me a bit of practice on the track in a game before the actual thing. And today we're on the road to go and meet Abby Pulling. She's a racing driver who's gonna give us a little bit of information about how important fitness in motorsport actually is. So how did you get into motorsport? Well, I got into motorsport through my dad. Uh, he used to race stock rods, you know, oval racing in the dirt. Um, and I used to go along to that when I was like three. And then he started racing motorbikes. And um, I went along to that again, long circuit, so yeah. <laughs> how would you find like motorsport outside the driving? Because there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff, isn't there? Um, yeah, you have to keep your nutrition and fitness and everything like, as well as you can. So how much should I be focusing on fitness before my first race? Well, so fitness is really important because it just keeps you mentally focused and it gets you prepared. It depends what level you're at. You always want to be kind of work it, like, working towards the level above. So what do you think I should be focusing on as like a rookie driver? Like what's the first thing I should be training? Um, I think just stamina. Like stamina is like really important in, in any kind of racing. You know, you, you, you don't want to be getting uh, worn out by the end of the weekend or anything. Like you need to keep on top of that. And I guess your arms as well. You don't want your arms getting, you know, achy towards the end of the weekend. After hearing what Abby had to say about fitness in motorsport, I decided to go to my local gym and speak to a personal trainer in order to find out what I needed to be focusing on. I spoke to Craig, who took me through a number of unique tests, which allowed me to understand what areas of the body I needed to train before my first motor race. He set me a number of aims before this race, firstly to lose 2kg and then to train my upper body strength, focusing on my neck and my arms. My first motor race was back in 2004. It was the British GT at Brands Hatch. I went along with my dad. I must have been around eight years old. And I distinctly remember the sound of the cars as we came to the infield car park. It was just absolutely insane, something I'll never forget. I also remember the car that won that day as well. It was a red Porsche. And because of that, it became one of my favorite cars. I just think it's fantastic to look back on this because in a lot of ways, this is where that dream, that passion started.
One of the biggest problems with motorsport is its cost. It's not cheap and accidents do happen. To understand how I gained the interest of sponsors, I spoke to professional racing driver Jamie Caroline. If you come from family that can afford to take you all the way to the top, then you don't have to work on the finances, you have to work on just the motorsport. The financial side of things is always hard, you always want to leave, try and leave that to someone else. We use Carlin for example, they have 80 plus employees from here to the States, so you can only imagine the outgoings of wages and team hotels, transport for the team. And So my F4 season with Carlin was 90% funded by sponsors. Um, and every single sponsor I had came from someone I knew. When you get up single seater wise, it then gets stupid. You need sponsors of over 100,000 individually. Sometimes you might need a big one of, you know, like say half a million. If anyone down, down the road or anyone in England had the money and thought, you know what, I want to go racing, they could just go to a race team, they tell them the price and they pay it, and then that's it, they're a racing driver. It's as simple as that. Do you have any advice for me to sort of go to anyone for that? I'd probably focus on motoring uh, companies um, and given you know social media following and what you've got on the YouTube side of things that is really what you can sell to sponsors is your audience your exposure your screen time your clicks and things like that is really what they want to see I've taken on board Jamie's advice and worked out how much this is actually going to cost. Our total is £4,000. Factoring in money from sponsors and personal contributions, we're still £800 short. To help us reach this goal, I've set up an online fundraiser and we only have one month to reach our target. If we don't obtain that, the dream is over. But that's the reality of motorsport. No money, no race. today yeah it's a big day um, like this license kind of dictates what happens in the next like, month because if I don't pass this then I can't race so I'm a little bit worried um, but I feel like I've studied enough I just need to I just need to put that into practice now My racing license is split into a written and practical test in the car, during which an instructor will guide and assess my ability to safely and consistently drive around the circuit. Thank Cheers. You. First gear. Let's go. That's it, well done. <laughs> That's the first bit done. You just drive. Yeah. Only worry what you're doing. Okay. Relax. Yeah. Now accelerate. Okay, that's it. Let it go out. Okay. I told you it's slippery. Yeah. Are you learning anything? I definitely am. <laughs> learning a lot. Straighten up. He passed. He passed. Good stuff. I'm not gonna lie, I was really worried going into that because there is just so many things that could go wrong and once you get on track that's the nervous bit because you know you went around for a couple of laps beforehand I'm like oh my god I'm not gonna be able to do this surely but uh, Will the, the instructor really helped me and we I think I improved quite a bit over the, the 10 or 15 minutes I was in the car so obviously a big learning experience ahead that's only just a license done but exciting times relieved I remember a couple of years ago I started sort of emailing people to try and get this dream going again. I was just emailing hundreds of companies each week to try and get someone to sponsor me to go motor racing and unsurprisingly no one got back to me and that 
just didn't happen. But I turned this dream into something else and I started up a YouTube channel around 2011, 2012, focused on motorsport and it's kind of come full circle because people have started watching my content on there. I have grew to a decent size and now I'm getting opportunities all around the world to go out to motor races and live the dream in a slightly different way. So it's kind of weird that I took this different route but I've sort of ended up getting to that same end goal. Cheers, mate. This is honestly one of the coolest bits. My racing overalls have arrived. Full sponsors, all of them on there, which is fantastic. But I think also my name being on there brings it home. Like this is actually gonna happen. It's like that, that, that makes me feel like a racing driver, all that. So that's really cool to get. Obviously that's one part of the safety equipment I need, all the fireproof stuff that's come over the last couple of days, and then the helmet. So most would see this is the most important bit. So this arrived recently, went and tried a few on, got one that fitted properly, uh, got the tinted visor on there as well, I think that helps me, and then the head and neck restraint on the back to make sure I'm all up to date and all the safety standards are met, so that's good. Now I'm ready to get out on track. It's going to be exciting. Oh, have we checked the Kickstarter, by the way? No, not recently. What's up? Wait, we did it. We got 800. Yeah. Yes. Well done. Ah, oh, that feels so good. That, that's a that's a weight lifted off our shoulders. At least we can race now. After passing my license, as well as obtaining the funds and equipment needed to race, I went to speak to Dan Robottom, who currently races in the British Touring Car Championship. Hopefully he'll give me some pointers about what I should be doing before my big race. So I'm going into a race weekend on a track I've never driven before. How should I approach that? Well, first of all, I'd start at home, like the Xbox, the PlayStation or the PC simulator. You know, it gives you a rough indication of where the circuit's going to go. And then when you arrive at the track, I'd definitely go out there and do a couple of laps oh, okay. on foot. Yeah. You know, just, it, it just allows you to look at the actual pitch of the circuit, surface changes, size of curbs, that mm. sort of thing, you know. Um, and then just go out there and take a tentative few laps. So you think you can learn a lot of that sort of stuff, like the bumps and how high the curbs are on simulators? Yeah, you can, you can now. I think that that's the hardest thing is, is, is learning the, the pitch of the circuit mm. on the sim because you don't, you're static. Yeah. And in a car, obviously, as you know, it's not static. But yeah, for sure, it's a lot better than it used to be. So how important is testing before I go out on track for the first time? Really important. You know, you're looking at going to your first event, so you need to get out there and get some experience of the circuit, of the car, of yourself, you know, because every driver has a different technique. Yeah. So, Should I be looking at anything in particular or? Um, a little bit like we discussed before we're learning the circuit, you know, focus your time on uh, surface changes, mm. curbs, and try and pick out some reference points for yourself, like braking and turning to help yourself along. So you're in the car before the race. How do you sort of visualize everything before you start? Well, the first thing to do is try and grab half an hour on your own, really, you know, just to get your head in the zone and to try and figure out what, what you're trying to, what you're expecting. You know, you need to look at where you've qualified or where you're starting and mm. who else is around you. Um, so I usually just like to take half an hour, do some visualisation, do a lot of visualisation mm -hmm. techniques across the weekend anyway, but especially half an hour before the race. Just trying to make a bit of a pre-plan. You can never really plan, but, <laughs> you know, you can kind of go, well, if that car goes that way, I'm going to go that way. And mm -hmm. just, just have some sort of time around and, you know, get get yourself ready and just uh, try and try and stay calm. Awesome. Works for me, won't work for everybody, but that's what works for me. After taking on board all of the advice I've been given, I got to work. I took part in several track days in a Formula Ford single seater, a GT Ford Puma, and finally a Mazda MX-5.
As race day approaches, I'm heading to Donington Park so I can drive the BMW race car for the first time. I'll also meet up with my teammate Sam, who will give me a couple of pointers and help me settle into the car. Sam's story is really interesting. He converted his road car into a race car and still drives it to every event. He started racing three years ago and has never missed a race. It's a great way to show everyone that there's a way into motorsport on a smaller budget. Morning. How you doing? Actually, really impressed. It's um, it's a funny thing. You say, oh yeah, yeah, you can come and drive my pride and joy, my racing car at alarming rates while I'm sat next to you, uh, and you never really know what to expect. But actually, straight away, I felt like quite reassured. So that's what he's out there doing right now. I hope, uh, and I'm going to jump in and see how he's getting on. But uh, honestly, I've been really pleased so far. Certainly happy to send him out there and race him. It's starting to hang me off the harnesses a bit, which is nice. So what do you think? I'm really surprised. I mean, just, it felt like by the end of the day, you know, I know it wasn't perfect, but it was really getting there. It's getting there. Yeah, absolutely. That's the phrase I would use. It's getting there. I was really pleased because after sending out for two sessions on your own, the last last hour or so, I haven't seen. So then I got in and just the difference was marked. If you have a gap, suddenly I was like, whoa, this guy's pedaling now. It was really nice. I mean, that was an incredible day. Really great to sort of throw myself into the deep end and really learn this car. Sam was a massive help. Uh, he really just allowed me to grow into the car and just get quicker and quicker, which is well, just really helpful for me. It was really confidence inspiring. So that's great for me. And now just a, a big long wait until the actual race. So a lot of nervous waiting until that point. I like to come up here from time to time as it allows me to clear my mind. It also allows me to think of ways that I can improve myself. I think my biggest fear with doing this race is letting myself down. If I don't do as well as I'd hoped, I, I'll probably have that, that sense of personal failure with me for a very long time. We get caught up so much in success or failure and nothing in between. But I suppose in reality, it could just go straight down the middle. It could just be okay. But my mind just doesn't work like that. Once we get to the race, so 
probably need a bit of time to myself before the race just to focus and then yeah Race, uh, a mandatory pit stop for everybody, whether they've got a driver change to do or not, in the middle third of the race. Uh, qualifying is a session we run in the morning where the cars go out in like a free practice kind of format, and the aim is to set the fastest lap time you can, fastest single lap, uh, and that determines the grid order. So whoever's done the fastest starts at the front, pole position and then the grid's decided by all the laps thereafter. So there's a big incentive to get as good a lap as you can. The further up you start, fewer cars you've got to pass to win. So how did qualifying go? Yeah, um, a bit of a crazy experience. Uh, it started in the rain, so that was quite exciting. I didn't really get a chance to push it just because I was I was just trying to get it around and do enough laps to, to qualify me. Uh, but yeah, once Sam got in the car, it was obviously rapid. Uh, um, I think well, Sam will, Sam's going to do the first half of the race, so I've just got to you know, focus on my lines, focus on my braking points, but hopefully by then it will be dry, so like, I know the lap time I can do, so it's just now to try and uh, replicate that in the race. Do you think it's going to be going through your mind when you line up on those grids? Um, well, when Sam hands over to me, um, obviously going to be a lot of uh, adrenaline, um, I didn't sleep very well, so hopefully I won't be too tired, but no, well, I'll be fine. It won't be too dis you know, dissimilar to what I've been doing so far, I've just got to yeah, focus. But yeah, really, really excited now. Um, but yeah, just a bit of a nervous wait at this point. This is just a series though, as the red lights go out, the race gets in the way. Dan Rogers now, who's got past Sam McKee. The two of them were, they're still side by side. Sam McKee goes up the inside into Druids to get past Dan Rogers once again. This is for second in class C. Rogers is coming back round the outside. Two of them are side by side to come down towards Graham Hill Bend. Now Sam McKee is into the pit. He was third in his category, wasn't he? And he's bringing the car in very slowly, so I'm not sure if there is a problem. But the tyre is not sitting straight at all. Something's wrong. I've damaged the car. It looks like um, Sam McKee's going to do uh, um, repairs on this car, though, so uh, his teammate can get back out. That'd be Alex Baldwin into his first race, but of course this will put them out of contention. It will prevent, I should say, his uh, teammate Alex Baldwin making his racing debut. I really feel for Alex because it was 17, 18 minutes in and we were running really well. He was expected to get in the car for his debut and I've let him down, which is pretty devastating. Alex, I'm sorry, we can't go. I'm really sorry, mate. This journey has been really incredible. Obviously, got to meet so many fantastic people, got to drive this car with Sam, and just yeah, obviously a massive shame that like a, a cheap component was the bit that let us down at the end of the day. But you know, I come away with this with so many great experiences. So many people have helped me out, and I'm never gonna forget this whole journey. So yeah, obviously not quite the way we wanted it to end, but I'm just so happy that we went on this journey and. You know, I'm 99% closer to achieving my dream now, but not quite there yet. But the chase goes on. <laughs>